Today on Titan Sports Recap, Titan men's soccer plays host to the Sacramento State Hornets, Titan ice hockey battles it out with Texas A&M, and Titans are inducted to Cal State Fullerton's Hall of Fame. All this and more on Titan Sports Recap. Hello and welcome back to Titan Sports Recap, bringing you the best video coverage of Cal State Fullerton Athletics. I'm Andy Waller. And I'm Garsh Paprit Sangha. The month of September wasn't too kind for the men's soccer team, as they finished with a record of three wins and five losses. The month of October, however, is a different story thus far. The team is 2-1. and one. Hoping to extend their October record of 3-1 and one and extend their winning streak to three, the game is scoreless in the first 24 minutes. Spencer Johnson with the corner kick, and Garrett Lossie flicks it in for his second goal on the season. The Titans up 1-0. A couple of minutes later, Titans have a 3-2 advantage. Ian Ramos passes it to Mark Fenelis, but Fenelis can't outsmart Teddy Sampson, as Sampson would have four saves on the day. Two minutes later, same score. Fenelis passes it to Dylan Stevens. Stevens uses his left foot to kick it past Sampson. That is his first goal of the season, coming to the sideline, getting some love from his teammates. First half is all the Titans would need as they win the game, 2-0. During the post game, there was a surprise waiting for one Titan. To be real honest, I'm not really surprised. Uh, we felt uh, even uh, uh, the games that we lost that we were much better than, than the results. It was played out wide and it circulated, got a pass across in the middle and then Colin O'Curry laid it off and I took a touch and just hit it. <laughs> After settling for a draw against Northridge last week, Titan women's soccer traveled to the Inland Empire to take on the UC Riverside Highlanders. And with the quick goal from Jessica Olofsson, UCR would shut out the Titans 1-0, handing Fullerton their first loss in conference Despite outshooting the Highlanders 10-7, the loss snapped a five-match unbeaten streak for Fullerton. The Titans' overall record is now 6-4-4 and 1-1-1 and one, one, and one in Big West Conference action. Well, Titan women extended their winning streak to 17 straight matches against the UC Riverside after sweeping the Highlanders in three straight sets over the weekend. The team is led by Bree Moreland, who contributed for her fifth double-double of the season, finishing with 10 kills. 10 digs while adding two service aces. Ju junior Julie Consani also helped orchestrate the Titans offense, adding an incredible 35 assists in the match. With the win, the Titans record now improves to nine wins, seven losses, and they're two and two in Big West play. Fresh off a split in a home and home series with rival Long Beach State, Titan ice hockey was back on the ice to take on Texas A&M. Splitting their last series, the Titans look to sharpen their blades against visiting Texas A&M Aggies. As the first period got underway, the Titans got off to a slow start, while the Aggies took advantage scoring three goals in the last five minutes of the period. First goal by Hayden Pritchard on the left corner, the second scored by Brett Young, and the third scored by Chris Turner, snucking right past the goalie. A rough start for Cal State Fullerton. With the first period behind them, the Titans wasted no time getting on the board with a goal from number 11, Alex Sulo, 13 seconds into the second period. Titan forward Taylor Castle cut the lead two minutes later, and it looked as if they killed off the Texas power play, but the Aggies scored with one second left in their one-man advantage. But the Titans fought back as number 12, Sean Selagumba, chips away to keep the game within one. The Aggies weren't okay with a one-score lead, so they end the second 5-3. Coming back in the third and ready for battle, Titans forward Taylor Castle gets a second goal on the night, making it 5-4. Titans tried to catch up, but they just couldn't make it happen and fell to Texas A&M 7-4. And that's the end of the game. Titans are now 4-3 on the season. Taylor Castle and assistant coach Chris Houlihan talk about how they played. Well, during the first period, uh, they came out pretty fast, hitting pretty hard, and um, 
we kind of played a little bit of catch up. They jumped ahead on the shot board and uh, got a few shots on us. But once we settled down, uh, well, we didn't really settle down until the second. But once we got in the second, we started chipping away back at it. And we just got unlucky with calls tonight. We couldn't catch a break with the referee. But other than the first period, I think we had a pretty solid game. After being within one goal of the Aggies, the Titans just couldn't catch a break. They head over to Arizona to face NAU in a two-game series. Their next home game will be against Chapman on October 26 at 9.15 p.m. From East West Ice Palace, Kaylee Krish, Titan Sports Recap. Starting today, three strokes back of the lead, women's golf would score a 305 in the final round and come back to win the Cowgirl Desert Intercollegiate Tournament hosted by the University of Wyoming. The Titans shot a 909 as a team over the three-day event barely edging out fellow Big West Conference rival Cal State Northridge, who shot a 9-10. Martina Edeberg led the way for Fullerton in the final round, shooting a score of 74, which is a two over par. The win was the first and final win of the fall season for Fullerton, as the Titans will resume play at the Jim West Challenge in Braunfels, Texas, on February 17th to begin the spring season. The nominations for the Titan Athletics were announced last month. It included three members from the 70s, a team that shocked the college baseball world in the 90s. I was lucky enough to attend the ceremony and, ha and have a longer than usual feature. Enjoy. It began eight years ago. Titan Athletic Department honored Greg Bunch, Tim Wallach, Augie Garrido, and others. After 23 inductees into the Titan Hall of Fame, three new members and one team will have the right to call themselves Hall of Famers. The 1995 NCAA National Championship team, gymnast Carol Johnston, men's soccer standout Mike Fox, and a pioneering men's basketball head coach Bobby Dye were in front of a sellout crowd at the Fullerton Marriott. Coach Bobby Dye helped the Titan basketball make the transition from Division II to Division I. Dye led the program to a school record six consecutive winning seasons from 1973 to 1979. Coach Stye told numerous stories, including the early days of Cal State Fullerton Long Beach State rivalry and how his distaste for Long Beach State spread like wildfire among the Titan crowd. I didn't realize our, our fans, how they had bought into that. We had some wild and crazy guys until you got into it. Anyway, ball goes in the stands and this poor guy goes into the stands after the ball. When he comes out of the stands, his shirt is over his head. <laughs> I think they took his shoes off. He came out of there. He had a big natural. He came out of there. His hair was close. We were, we were Titans at that time. While Dye was making history on the hard court, Mike Fox took men's soccer to a new level in the late 70s. The all-time leader in points and goals scored in Cal State Fullerton's history enjoyed an 11-year pro professional soccer career. Fox is humbled to join a such an elite group of individuals. I played here, what, 20 some odd years ago, almost 30 years, and so just, I mean, I, I've done a lot with soccer since then, but, but to be acknowledged and, and recognized here at Fullerton has been an extreme, extreme honor. Around the time Fox was dominating the football grounds, a 4 foot 10 inch gymnast, Carol Johnston, took the world of gymnastics by a storm and helped steer the Titans to a 45-0 record in her three seasons at Fullerton. Now battling Alzheimer's disease, Johnston's college teammate and roommate and current associate athletic director, Julie Bowles, spoke on Johnston's behalf. Bowles told the audience, Johnston considers another trait more of a disadvantage than having a partial right arm. She is actually a little bit more concerned about being short. <laughs> With the, right arm anyway. <laughs> the gymnastics team won the national championship in 1979, the same season baseball won its first national championship. After adding another one in 1984, the Titans surprised everyone with the victory in 1995. It was labeled as a rebuilding year, but the team is known as the greatest team in college baseball history. Mostly the whole team were in attendance, from yeah. Ted Silva to DC Olsen. Mark Kotze, however, wasn't, but he did send a video message. For Kotze and Augie Garrido, it was their second bid into the Titan Hall of Fame. For Augie Garrido, the 95 team will always stay close to his heart. Uh, one of the best teams I've ever coached and from the standpoint of being unselfish and totally about each other and becoming one as a unit. 
The event allowed the audience to meet up with the new inductees, and it allowed the inductees to catch up with their former teammates and friends. The surprise of the night went to Bobby Dye's granddaughter, Peyton Marie. Uh, I want to say, I'm so proud of my public coach. I wish I could have been there when he was coaching, but I couldn't. The important thing is that I'm here now sharing this amazing thing with you, and I want you to know, Papa, that I'm so proud of you and I love you. And again, a huge congratulations to our in newly inducted Hall of Famers. It was truly a great night, and they will reminisce the stories that will last a lifetime. Speaking of spring sports, the schedules for baseball, tennis, and indoor track and field have been released. Baseball has a tough schedule this year. They face seven teams that made the NCAA tournament in 2013, including the University of San Francisco, UCLA, and UC Santa Barbara. Titan Tennis also has released their schedule and looks to start off new head coach Diane Matias' tenure with some success. After breaking four school records, women's indoor track and field heads into the 2014 season with some excitement and determination to be even better than last year. For more information on any of these schedules, please go to FullertonTitans.com. Now for this week's Titan Timeline, highlighting the biggest games for our in-season fall sports, Titan Volleyball returns home from their three-game road trip on October 25th for a match against Cal Poly and takes on the UCSB Gauchos on the following night in Titan Gym. Women's soccer also comes back to Fullerton after a two-game road trip to host the Gauchos on October 20th. They have a well-deserved week break before taking on the UC Davis Aggies on October 27th. And men's soccer plays host to UC Irvine on October 19th and heads out for a midweek game at CSU Northridge and also comes back to Titan Stadium to face UC Riverside. And remember, all of our social media outlets can be, uh, you can catch our entire highlight video on our YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com backslash Titan Sports Recap. Follow us on Twitter for our handle at CSUF Sports Recap. Find us on Facebook for all of our updates on Fullerton Athletics. And check us out on Instagram for behind-the-scenes photos. Follow us at Titan Sports Recap. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. From all of us here at Titan Sports Recap, I'm Garsh Sanga. And I'm Andy Waller. See all you guys in two weeks.